as part of our um, exploration of um, dimension and depth using light and shadow, um, let's do a cube and I'll show you how to construct a cube in Photoshop. Uh, this is a thumbnail that I uh, reduced to 180 pixels uh, for my list of projects. Um, so this is really low resolution here and that's why it's small. If I were to enlarge this, uh, take a look at how it pixelates pretty quickly. Uh, so that's why we're doing all of our projects at 240 dpi, around 12 by 12 inches, so we have nice sharp images, um, not only to display, but also um, in the future. Um, uh, having high resolution, you can do pretty much anything we want with the picture, but if you don't have the resolution, gaining resolution back is impossible still at this point. So anyway, let's go. Uh, file new, and bring this over. So changing, if it's set up for pixels, change it to inches. Um, this would be fine at 10 by 10 at 240. It doesn't have to be that big. Uh, resolution 240. And in order to have that nice little uh, light flare and color, let's leave it in RGB color. And click Create. Um, so I'm going to put a gradient on the background. Um, and I need a uh, new layer, so I click the plus button next to the trash can down here on the layers palette uh, to start our project. Clicking on the rectangle marquee, the second tool down in the upper left, and click and drag, um, and, but hold down shift to constrain it to a perfect square. Okay, so we have a perfect square sitting on layer one. And we're going to fill this with three values of gray. So I'm going to click on the foreground color and pick out a middle gray here. This will be our front. And then click on the bucket tool. If you see a gradient tool, click and hold it and then fill that with gray. <clears throat> I can deselect this now. Control D is the shortcut. And let's duplicate it twice. Control J and J. So now we have three layers. Holding down the control key and hitting J, J. Okay. And going into the move tool and moving one of these up and one of these over. So I'm going to snap them next to each other. And the top one I want to be a lighter gray and the right one I want a darker gray. So click on the foreground color and as soon as the color picker loads I'm going to click a lighter gray. You can see the new versus the current. And take the bucket tool again and click in the top one, and then one more time click in the foreground color and choose a darker gray. And then uh, click on the layer that um, is the right layer in order to fill it. Okay. So we have three perfect squares, a light, medium, and a dark set up this way. And now let's project them into the third dimension. Uh, and to do that, I need to pull out a couple of margin lines. And these exist in the ruler. And if you don't see your ruler, uh, hit Control-R. Control-R, and that'll show you the ruler. And then you can click inside the ruler and drag. And set them up about like this. So you see a perfect square right here. Um, okay, good. Uh, now with the move tool, click the top square and let's use free transform, control T. 
and then hold down the control key and grab the middle square in the upper and move that right into there. I could um, zoom in to show you that a little better. Holding the control key and just putting that corner right into the intersection of these two lines like that. Control zero to zoom out and check mark to set this transform and then we're going to do that to this square, the right one. So I click on it with the move tool to select it. Control T. Holding Control, I'm going to grab this box here, the outer right edge middle box, and click and drag and match that up into the corner. Okay. And then we're going to merge these three layers by clicking the top layer, holding shift, click the bottom layer, there all three are selected, right click, then merge layers. Okay, on the background now I wanted to put a gradient from white to black, so I'm going to click on this little icon here, black and white, over the uh, foreground and background to return this to the uh, default black and white squares here. Click and hold the gradient tool to get back uh, the bucket tool to get to the gradient tool and then make sure the first button is turned on for a line gradient or a linear gradient. I'm going to put light at the bottom and dark at the top. So um, with black in the foreground I'm going to click on the background layer click at the top and come down to the bottom and click and drag and then let go. I'm going to get rid of the uh, margin lines, don't need them at this point, using the move tool by clicking and dragging them back into the ruler. And next we need a shadow for this. Um, so to do that, I'm going to copy the cube, control J, and flip it forward vertically. So that's control T for free transform, right click, flip vertical, and I'm going to make it a little smaller by holding down shift and grabbing a corner here, just a tiny bit. And next, we want to make it solid black and we want to blur it out and we want to put it underneath the other cube. So to make it solid black, come up here to Image, Adjustment, Threshold. And using this slider, pull this all the way to the right and it'll be make it all solid black. Say OK to that. And then we want to blur it, so um, maybe I'll put it underneath the other cube first. So to do that, notice that it, this layer 1 with the black is over the original one. So I click and drag that to put it between the background and the top layer. Okay, something like this. I may adjust the size of that one more time. Um, and let's blur it out now. So filter, blur. Gaussian blur is the good one to use because it has a slider and we can control how much blur. I'm doing about 30 pixels here and I may rotate this a little bit. Control T. Coming out beyond this corner, click and drag it a little bit kind of like that. Uh, we have a little peeking through though. So if I want to get rid of that, I hit E for eraser and choose a larger size eraser size, you know, 100 pixels or so, and I just erase that out of there while you're still on that layer. Okay. Good enough. 
So the last uh, touch to this is going to be to put a light source in the upper left again so that it, it, it reinforces the impression that there's a light above and that it's darker on the right and um, the shadows being cast in this direction. So click on the background layer then go filter, render, um, a lens flare. Filter, render, lens flare. And take and click this in the upper left side. You can leave the defaults here and say OK. Great. So uh, at this point, we can save a copy so that it turns into a JPEG and put that on your, your folder. So um, file, save a copy because we have these layers here. Um, and name it project or 15.1, just call it 15.1 and click save. Okay, and save it locally on your machine and then be sure to upload it into your project 15 folder on Google Drive. So cancel that. Okay, part two of project 15 is to um, I'm going to hide this shadow for now. Don't need it. And I'll leave the light alone, but it will probably end up covering it up. We'll see. Is I want to take, uh, because this, if you look at the outside edge of this, it's really a hexagon. And hexagons tile perfectly with no spaces. They all fit together. So I'm going to hit Control J, J twice and move one right here and move the other one right here. Snap them together. You can zoom in to get it perfect. Use your arrow key to nudge them. So, close enough. And merge these three together by clicking a top layer, holding shift, click the bottom of the three, right click, merge layers, and control zero to zoom out. Um, what I want to do is um, make these a little smaller, control T, and then fill out the page with these. So, holding down shift, grab a corner, pull, and these will all, like a puzzle, interlock with each other. So control J, one at a time, and nudge them with your arrow key, uh, control J, and they all fit together beautifully. Control J. The last one that you moved is where the new one will be generated from. Control J. Okay, get the idea. Um, let me go up here. Save this one as 15.2 in your project folder. If you want to finish filling out the whole frame, you can. Uh, another variation is to Control J, another one of these, and make it small. Hold Shift. And fit that into Let's see. Before I get doing that, I better merge what I have together. Let me pull that one all the way to the top. Click on the second one in here. And so I need to make that a little smaller. To see it better, I'm going to hit Control B and give
give it a little color here. Um, yeah, I'll just make it a little mildly red. And control T, smaller yet, hold shift. Trying to think about how these would fit, and um, they could fit a number of different ways. But you see how this kind of is sitting on the edge of this cube and coming down, and I'm aligning this line here. Um, again, use your arrow key, and I'm aligning this line here. That's one of possible variations here. And I could sprinkle a couple of these throughout. I'm also getting an optical illusion right now as this indent is kind of also, if you let your gaze drift a little bit, uh, it comes out and projecting outward, kind of flipping back and forth. Um, so play with uh, adding a couple of more cubes in here. Um, play with uh, some variations of color. Um, we could also uh, I could hide this and take this whole uh, grouping here and make it smaller and play with some rotation or mirroring games with it. Um, just be a little creative, a little playful with this. So how would I do that? Control J and notice that they'll always fit together. That's pretty cool. Uh, but what if I were to control T and mirror this? And then um, merge these two and control J and control T and flip it vertically. And move it and put a light in the middle here. That could be interesting. So to do that, click on the background, filter, render, lens flare, and I'll stick that right in the center. Increase the brightness a little bit. Bam. So play with this um, and have, have some creative fun and uh, make at least six if, and up to ten pieces to put in Project 15 folder and see you in the next one.